Welcome back. This is Ona with Art of Awakening. And I'm going to do a little bit of an art reading here for Eclipse season. I've been... I actually technically don't have the time for this today, but I'm, I'm doing it anyway because I'm being guided to. And because it's my joy to do so. Right, so I am being asked to bring forward an angel of light for this eclipse season because we are in the midst of eclipse season right now and we just had a solar eclipse last week we're looking at a lunar eclipse coming forward um, next week and it's pretty intense and I don't know about you but seeing a lot of just disturbances right and I know we had the earthquakes in um, California that certainly counts I've been um, hearing a lot of people uh, with experiences with <laughs> insect incidents I had, uh, you know bed bugs uh, yellow jackets I'm hearing people getting stung um, pincher bugs, all sorts of stuff like disturbances, bugging things, bugging, right? Just coming out of the woodwork. I'm also uh, getting a lot of just noise disturbances. Jackhammers, pounding in the night, weird mechanical noises, <laughs> you name it. All this stuff is coming forward. And of course, it's all metaphorical, right? Um, you know, it, as as we move forward in our in our spiritual journeys it's like it's it's it becomes very apparent that all this stuff that comes forward in um in life really is just sort of a mirror of what's happening spiritually and you know collectively we're going through a huge huge shift so um we just came through that summer solstice so it is no wonder that a dark rebound kind of happening um, eclipses do that, right? So what an eclipse is, is the sun, the, the light being blocked. And so when that happens, like spiritually, it's a time of a lot of vulnerability, right? In, in a way, or it's just a time where dark energies can come forward because there's there's actually there's some spiritual people that believe that uh, during an eclipse it's actually less you know spiritual light that gets through than at night time so um you know it's pretty it's pretty significant so if you're experiencing stuff like this you know the way I'm looking at it is that it's it's really a good thing in that it's allowing us to it's allowing that stuff to come to the surface so we can look at it right and this angel really she's got this she's really looking and she can see through this stuff right and that's what we're being asked to do is to see through it and to see through something you really have to look at it um, I'm going to share a very humbling story that happened to me this week. Um, I, I belong to a, well, I belong to several private groups on Facebook, but this particular one, um, an acquaintance of mine, uh, this one is all healers that I, I'm talking about, this group that I belong to. And an acquaintance of mine kind of put forward that she wanted to, you know, was open to trading sessions. And so I decided, yeah, sure, let's do that. Um, so I met with her on Monday, and it was m my turn first to be the uh, the receiver. And I just found myself really, really, really um, resistant. And this particular healer is... Uh, She's really good at just kind of digging down, right? And and kind of seeing what's underneath. 
and my inner child was like, man, um, super not wanting this to happen. Um, hold on, I'm going to, well, I was going to try and find an eraser, but maybe I'll just make do with what I got. Um, yeah, so it was like, I was super, super resistant. And I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> finally, you know, she kept working at, at it, you know. And um, I, I just kind of, that, that part of me broke down. And I was like, yeah, you know what, there's all this stuff. And to be honest, it was like, really, it brought up, like, I was just pissed. My inner child was like, or, you know, part of me was just like, you know what, I have been doing this work <laughs> for years and years and years and and you know and I have come a long way um you know but part of me has been like oh well you know I've come this long way um but now it's really time to look at okay where's the deeper stuff right there's a deeper layer um and so this ties in with some patterns that I've been seeing um oh you know, people coming to me, um, whether it's clients or people simply emailing or just people in my life or myself, I'm including myself in this. Um, like these patterns that I'm seeing. And one of them, First of all, before I go into this, I, I, I want to say that it is a really wonderful exercise to look back. And, and, and I really encourage you to do this because I'm going to say things that are, you know, maybe going to be um, triggering egos, right? That are meant to trigger the ego. Um, but, but before that, it, it's also really, really important to um, take a look at the progress that you've made, right? Because uh, we all... You know, if you're watching this, you're, I'm sure you have made, like, look back at yourself from two, three, four years ago, even a year ago, and it's going to be, like, a different, different person, right? And I'm almost feeling like she needs to be, she's holding up a mirror. Let me see how this is going to work. Anyway, um, yeah, so so first of all, just really pat yourself on the back because it's been a tough road to hold, hold these past um, few, you know, months. And, you know, there's that I know that you've made huge progress. I know I have. Um, like I look back and, and I'm really <laughs> in a different place than I was um, even a year ago but certainly like four years ago, way different place, manifesting all sorts of things. It's been a wild ride and um, a lot of good stuff, right? Um, okay, so that said, you know, just to really give yourself credit, but in doing so, what you've liberated yourself into is being able to now look at a deeper level. A deeper level of you know stuff um, so you know when I'm asking us to look at this this is a mirror but she's also it's also a light right other hand up here okay yeah so I hope you can see this yeah oh, good looks looks like it's picking up on the camera um, so okay so here are the couple of the patterns that I'm seeing one is patterns of pride right and just straight up pride and that's what I'm talking about with like you know myself that didn't want to see it um, you know the, 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 the deeper things that need to be addressed and but there's also there's like different ways for pride to manifest 
one is like, but the one I'm thinking of right now is the I'm fine. Oh, okay. There's a couple that are coming forward. One is comparing oneself to others, right? Um, especially on the spiritual journey. Um, and the way I look at it is like, we're all each other's twin flames ultimately, right? <laughs> so we're all eventually, you know, after eons and eons, we're all, so, we're all just facets of God. We're all facets of the divine, right? So eventually we're all going to kind of meet up in the same place. So there's really no, 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 no such thing as ahead or behind spiritually. There just isn't. Um, and then also we all have our own gifts and strengths, right? Just like each animal. Like I'm thinking of like, what if a beaver was trying to run like a deer and comparing himself to that and he wouldn't be really in his joy right and we probably wouldn't have the beaver dams because he'd be out there in the forest trying to run like a deer so <laughs> really it's like it, but if i mean if he's comparing himself to a deer it, it it looks like he's not really getting anywhere or doing anything right um maybe not the greatest analogy whatever but I think you know what I'm saying. It's like, you know, we each have our own path and our gift. And it's really, the encouragement is to really look for the truth of what brings you joy. Because there's your gift. And, you know, we each have these spiritual gifts. And they're brought out in our joy. I'll give her a little color here. And uh, so, you know, what's what's holding you back from your joy? Think about that. And then the other one aspect of pride. And pride, you know, we all have it. Okay, so I'm not pointing fingers at anybody except maybe myself, right? You know, because we, we we all we all have this. It's it's the ego. The ego is um you know, it's a prideful thing. And and this is not the same kind of pride as I'm asking you to have when you look back and realize just, just how far you've come. That's that's a, that's the light side of pride, right? You, you know, we 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 need that acknowledgement. We need that validation. Um, you know, that is nothing to avoid, right? We need to to, to hear it from ourselves, we need to hear it from other people. You know, I mean, it's nice to hear it from other people. It helps. Um, but then when the pride becomes like, you know, this judging kind of deal, that's when we want to just sort of avoid it. So another type of pride is I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. And I've, you know, I, I've been doing the work and I've, I, I, I know this. And <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we've been doing the work and we know this. And we do know it. And that's the thing. It's like we do know it underneath it all. Your higher self does know this stuff, right? Um, so the, the, the tricky thing about this kind of pride is that there is like a lot of truth in it, right? Um, and that's what makes it so tricky. Right? It's, it's easy to see illusion that is pure illusion. It's not so easy to see illusion that is mostly truth, right? But, but like um, corrupts the truth, right? That manipulates the truth. Okay, that's a little harder to see. So <laughs> this is why I'm bringing it up. Um, just because it's, it's something that we all deal with. Um, so I'm fine look at your life and see where where you're telling yourself I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine but it's really not right um you know I'm I've been doing the work yeah if you've been doing the work but you're still experiencing blocks you're still experiencing um y you know whatever it is the depression that comes up you know don't feel like these things are bad they are there to just call to attention and bring the stuff to light, right? Every time a shadow comes up, it's simply asking that we look at it. It's asking to be acknowledged, right? Um, so 
when we just look at the truth and accept it, that's when, you know, that's when we can start to shine the light. So, I'm thinking this is a beautiful angel. What else we can do? What color hair should she have? I'm almost getting sort of like this. She's almost like. I don't know why I'm thinking kind of purpley. <laughs> purpley hair. I've been having purple come forward a lot. There's like a lot of purple around lately. So purple, you know, it's the violet flame. It is a transmutation. So Here's the encouragement. And now I'm going to be putting a little shadow in here, you know, fixing her up a little bit here. I may not finish her right now. I may just post her later. So if you uh, want to see the finished one, I'll post her when she's done and you'll need to subscribe for that. Not pushing you to subscribe, I'm just stating a fact here. Um, hold on, let me find some purple. Okay, so violet flame, you can always call on the violet flame, right, to transmute things, but um, which is quite powerful. You can meditate with it or just, you know, call it in. Maybe this is the angel amethyst. But, um, Part of what I'm being guided is really to that it's okay. So here's here's what I'm being told. Here's what when I you know when I really tune into it with nature, right? Because we're dealing with our animal self, right? Because um, we're we're dealing with darkness, and darkness comes up, and we've all dealt with a lot of darkness, and that's why we're you know we're we're we're, we're coming out of that. Um, so when an animal is injured. A lot of the stuff goes back to injury of some sort, to having suffered. And, you know, whether it's this life or past life or whatever it is. Um, so when an animal is injured, it, it, it doesn't, like even if it's in a lot of pain, um, typically a wild animal, even a pet, is not going to show that pain. It's it's they they can be in a huge amount of pain before we you know they even give any whimper, right? Um, and there is a reason for this because in the wild, any show you know if an animal is obviously vulnerable, if it's showing its vulnerability, that animal becomes a target for predators, absolutely a target. Okay, and so. This is a, an instinctive reaction. Um, it is a survival response. Okay, so when we're in pain, when we're feeling threatened or in pain, it is a survival response. I'm fine, right? Um, so I think it's really important to have compassion for ourselves when we have that response um, because it's there for a reason. And uh, somebody recently um, kind of posted something about the ego being the protector. And I thought that was a really wonderful insight um, because the ego really developed in animals. And we can see that animals do, they don't have as strong an ego as we do, but, um, you know, they, they do have ego, right? Um, you know, if you've ever seen a cat get pissed off or something, right? You know, they've got an ego. Um, so 
it's like the ego developed in the animal world as a protector, right? Um, and, and the mind, which is really, the ego is really, hangs out with the mind a lot, right? Um, it was developed as a protector thing, as a survival thing to help animals to deal with a, a harsh environment. Um, so there is this, this um, inborn tendency in all of us, that's our animal part, to, um, to just like say I'm fine. And the thing is that when, you know, and that actually served us well as, as humans, right, in this, in the, you know, when the, the world is in 3D, well, we're shifting out of 3D, and it's no longer serving us because it keeps us in 3D, right? That, that idea of, I'm fine, I can deal with this, I, and, and what happens is that we, it keeps us in those situations that aren't serving us because we're saying, I'm fine, I can deal with it. And then we want to stay there, right? We don't want to change. And so um, in order to shift out of that, it's really necessary to actually solve the root problem, <laughs> you know, address the root problem of what's going on so we can heal, so we can move forward. Because the other, um, you know, because that's that's one aspect of an animal, um, is the fight or flight or the, um, you know, the stiff upper lip kind of response. Um, you know, that's one aspect of survival in animals is is that whole stress response. But then the other aspect of survival that really doesn't get as much um, attention as I think probably it should is the aspect of, you know, the thriving aspect, and that's when you know, they're, they're, they're having their, um, you know, their mating behavior and their feeding behavior and they're giving birth and they're, they're happy. Right. And that's where they spend most of their time really. And so, you know, animals, because they live in the present, they very easily default back to that normal, you know, um, thriving kind of mode. Okay, and that's what we need to actually teach ourselves to do. And in order to do that, because we are so um, caught up in the mind, um, we need to bring it to consciousness, right? Anything that is not um, serving us or anything, any old wounds, we need to actually bring them to consciousness in order to heal them. The animals don't necessarily, right? They just default back. But we do, and and that's why we go through all this work. So, um, so here is the suggestion: is to spend some time. Spend some time this week. This is eclipse season. It's also Mercury retrograde. So this is really, really a good time to um, sit back and and and. Um, do some reflecting and maybe that's what this mirror is all about right um that she's got in her hand it's a good time to reflect and to really be honest with ourselves looking back looking at, I, and the other thing i'm getting a lot is inner child work okay um dialoguing with the inner child asking the inner child you know um what how they feel it's a lot about feeling, feelings coming forward and allowing the feelings to come forward because the feelings are what tell us, they show us what's, what's, you know, where, where needs to be healed. Um, so a few ways that I found really useful to do this, um, well, one, going out in nature is always healing. Um, but you can journal is a really good way. Um, Another really good way is through the arts, any of the arts, um, because like just, and don't think about it beforehand, just either start to paint or start to dance or start to, you know, write or whatever it is, um, and see what comes out. Ask your inner child what she wants to paint or dance or write, right? 
um, see what comes forward. And it might really surprise you, it might delight you, but it also might bring up stuff, you know, that to be healed. Uh, like my inner child was, you know, it was like all about kind of being acknowledged and being recognized. And um, we all need that, right? So, so see what comes up for you, see what you have been denying yourself or see where it feels like other people have denied you. Remember that it's always a reflection of our own self, right? Even though originally it might be something that happened to you as a child that was beyond your control, but you know, we all assimilate that stuff, so. All right, so Hopefully this has been helpful. Like I said, I'm going to finish her and um, I'll post her as a as just a post um, when she's done. And uh, just really have a have a nice relaxing eclipse season. Uh, it's a really good time to just sit back, find some stillness, breathe and relax. And I believe you know I'm feeling like after Mercury retrograde is done, it'll be a good time to move forward again. Um, but uh, take a little summer vacation. <laughs> Have fun. I'll catch you next time.